All right, what we're gonna look at today is a pack that I got from 3V Gear. This is the Paratus three-day operator pack. It is a 40-liter backpack. Um, it is a little over four pounds in weight, and it runs just below $90 um, from 3V Gear directly. Now, <clears throat> I've worked with 3V Gear in the past on a couple reviews. They've sent me a few things here and there, um, and I've always really liked their stuff. I think, um, it's kind of a niche they they're really uh, providing some decent quality bags and packs uh, for guys and gals who don't have a huge budget um, maybe who don't uh, know or trust military surplus because they're just not exposed to it so this is kind of like the common man's pack backpack um, and particularly I think it's really good um, or it fits into the whole tactical bug out uh, go bag uh, scenario. You know, at uh, over four pounds, this is not a backpacking backpack. Um, it's not light by any means. Um, so if you're a backpacker and you want to do a lot of camping out of this bag, this may not be the bag for you. There may be better options. But um, as a general purpose go bag, um, it may fill that role. So just going to jump right into this thing. Um, so the color that they sent me was OD green. Uh, I believe it comes in black, coyote, and even a foliage gray color. Um, I prefer the OD. I think it looks pretty good. Um, the material on this um, is uh, very similar to a 500D Cordura. I don't think it's exactly 500D. I think it's a little bit different, but um, it's very close to it. Um, on top we've got a, a grab handle that is neoprene coated so that gives you good something to grab onto. The back panel of this bag has a very uh, semi-rigid um, foam backing to it with these uh, kind of uh, 3D built-in channels so that's going to help with airflow a little bit. Um, also provides some rigidity to the pack because this pack does not have a frame. There is no uh, hard sheet inside of it. There's no aluminum stays, nothing like that. So it is frameless. <clears throat> so know that going into it. Um, we've got uh, pretty decent shoulder straps with an adjustable sternum strap. So that's going to go up and down on the straps. You've got a waist belt, which is a two inch and this is removable so I know that's important for a lot of people a lot of people do not like having a waist belt they want to use it without so you're able to take this off if you don't need it now this is not a load bearing belt this is more of a stabilization belt so something to consider uh, if you plan on carrying a lot of weight um, you may want to go to a bigger pack something with a frame and something with a load bearing belt but for the weight that I'm carrying um, which is probably like in the 15 pound range. It's not bad at all. So this is a good stabilization belt works perfectly for that <clears throat> uh, One thing to note on their strapping uh, They're including Elastic keepers on everything So that's nice. It's a nice feature um, a lot of packs don't do that um, you will see clones of this bag out on the market all over the place. There's a lot of different companies who make this style of bag, um, and they're varying degrees of quality. So this one, uh, for this style, is probably the best that I've found so far. I mean, uh, and we'll go through it. You're going to see what I think about quality, and you guys can look it up up close. So another thing is <clears throat> this bag has these straps right here which um, you can take off but what happens is you take these and you clip it around the front that cinches up the pack this way but it also pulls the shoulder straps up so that is going to uh, alleviate some uh, pressure on the tops of your shoulders so that's a good feature um, load lifters is a very standard feature in a lot of backpacking backpacks and this is kind of their load lifter um, setup and it works pretty well. Uh, once again we got elastic keepers to, to tame all that extra strapping that comes on these so that's awesome. I love that feature. Down the side 
we've got a compression strap up here, elastic keeper, and then we have a side pocket um, with a um, compression strap. And what's cool about this pocket is that if you unbuckle this, this pocket actually comes completely off the bag um, with clips. <clears throat> so not uh, traditional Molly clips like um, like malice clips or anything. It doesn't come like anything like that. Um, I would call these like a speed clip. And see if I can get one of these off of here easily. Yep, just like that. That's their clip. And that allows that allows you to clip and uh, take on and off this pouch very easily. Now, if you don't like these kind of clips and you don't trust them and you want something more hard uh, permanent mounting, I would go with malice clips. Those are readily available. And once you put a malice clip on, it is not coming off at all. So that is an option for you as an upgrade if you want to do something different. Um, that would be a suggestion of mine, is going with malice clips. But I've had no issues with these yet. Um, they seem to lock uh, positively. And they tend to stay where they're supposed to. So they have not come undone yet. So <clears throat> I think that's kind of cool that these come off and on so easily. Like that. Another great thing about these side pouches is the they are actually uh, <clears throat> designed to fit a canteen. And I've got my canteen kit in here. So if you're running a um, like a, a, a military canteen um, or heavy cover or the Nalgene Oasis canteen, they will fit in here along with a cup. <clears throat> so. Got my Keith Titanium Canteen, which is the exact same thing as the heavy cover with a cup, and that fits in here perfectly. Uh, another feature of this pouch is that inside there is a lightweight sewn sleeve, which is perfect for my lid. So my lid slips in the front right there in that sleeve, <clears throat> and then the canteen itself with the, the cup fits right inside. Um, I know some guys are going to probably ask about the um, Pathfinder Canteen set. I, I think that is a bigger canteen as far as uh, more boxy and I don't know if it'll fit in here. It, it may not so that, I really don't know. Maybe someone can answer that in the comments down below but um, the, the military style canteens which tend to be uh, pretty slim fitting fit in here really well. And of course, on this side, it's the exact same setup, the same pouch, removable. Uh, one thing to note on these pouches and all over the bag, uh, the zipper pulls are 550 cord. Um, I think early on, on some older 3V gear that I, I reviewed, they weren't the, the 550 cord style zipper pulls. I think they were something different, if I remember correctly. It's been a while. Um, but a lot of times on backpacks I have to remove the zipper pulls and upgrade to 550 cord because they put cheap um, braided nylon uh, thin, um, usually too short. Um, this is very much the way I like it. It's about the, about the length I need. I like 550 cord because um, it has a good grip and it's just strong. It's not going to break. So that's something, something to note, that all the zippers on this pack have that on there for zipper pulls. Now, moving to the front. Um, this is probably the more unique feature of this bag is this pouch right here. So once again, we've got a removable pouch. And what's awesome about this little bag is that it is a little pack all unto itself. Um, and uh, it's just, it's really a cool option 
and kind of a good idea to have a pack that is attached to a larger pack that you can take away and then put this around your waist or carry it on your shoulder and scout around um, away from your day camp. So <clears throat> go ahead and take this apart now. This has molly straps that unbutton. You pull those through the molly loops. And then the back of the bag has these metal rings. They're not plastic, they're actually metal. So they thread through the rings, the straps do. You just pull those out and then that pulls through. So really easy to take on and off, not a big deal. So then when you're done with it, just weave them back through, button them back up, and you're good to go. This is the cool feature of this pouch and what makes this a great go bag kind of pack. Um, I'm able to take this strap that I've got attached up here, unbutton it, pull that through, get that off, and attach it to this buckle back here. Same kind of deal. Run it through, secures with a snap and Velcro. Through, secure it, snap it. Now you have a waist, an adjustable waist belt with a buckle, two inch webbing, uh, plenty of room of adjustment. You can see how long that strap is. Um, and of course, if you don't want to have it in the waist bag configuration, put it back on these, and now you got a shoulder bag. Now, what I've done is, and what I think for a go bag uh, type scenario for this type of pack, this is really good as a medical bag um, and for uh, first aid equipment. So in front here, I've just got a couple items. I got some quick clot um, in here. I've also got um, some lip balm, but there's room back here in this pouch for more uh, first, uh, like uh, band-aid type stuff. And you got two pockets here, so you can organize your gear that way. That's a one-way zipper on the front. Of course, you've got Molly and two-inch webbing um, on the front as well, so you can attach older Alice-style pouches and items to that. Um, on the sides, they got some personal hygiene items. I've got some foot powder. And I got some toilet paper. The main pack, I've got one component, and this is the um, the trauma module uh, <clears throat> for the military first aid kits. Uh, this has pretty much everything you need for trauma, and it is vacuum sealed in a bag, so you can cut this open really quickly or tear it open and access all the stuff. But it's it's got everything in here: tape and uh, gauze, and there's shears and um, all that stuff. So definitely a lot of volume inside this bag and of course on the back here there is a mesh divider or pocket that you can help organize your gear. So I would probably suggest um, you know having everything taken out of that packaging and set up in key locations on this bag if you're going to use it for a medical pack so if something does happen you can get to it quickly access it quickly. I just threw some stuff in here that I had on hand that I knew I knew was going to be uh, <clears throat> good medical gear to show you and, and show you the capacity of this little bag. Awesome. Oh, and um, if you want to buy this pack by itself, they sell that as well. So if you just wanted this and you didn't want the bigger pack, or maybe you have a pack that's similar and you want to attach it to yours, you got the pouch removed 
and now we're going to go into uh, the main pack and then this outside pocket. So right up front here, if you undo the load lifter straps, you've got a nice heavy duty zipper. That unzips three quarters of the way, not bad. Of course this is nylon lined. So that's like a nylon pack cloth kind of material. I like that, that makes it easier to get stuff in and out, but also helps with waterproofness or water resistance. It slows down moisture getting into the pack. Um, in here, since this is kind of set up for a winter scenario, I've got a, a GSI uh, thermal mug. Uh, these are really nice uh, to have in your camping winter gear because they will keep a beverage hot for a period of time. Um, just got some cordage in here, some tent stakes, some carabiners, things like that. So this is kind of like a little um, go bag in itself, uh, just for setting up my tarp and my shelter and things like that. Of course, uh, some food items. There's coffee in here, um, cliff bars, things like that, necessity items. I've got my heavy cover spork. A um, little jet boil, jet power fuel canister. You can use whatever kind of canisters you want, but I, I like these for winter time. Um, when I want to grab my bag and just get out, uh, the, the fuel canister stoves are great. Cartridge stoves are great because they're quick, they're easy, they're efficient. Put a windscreen around them. They do even better. Um, only thing is with this type of fuel, it does get cold, so you need to warm it up. <clears throat> Sometimes I put that inside my jacket as I'm doing stuff around camp, and then by the time I'm ready to make coffee, I can pull that out, hook the stove to it, and in here, in this little uh, Pathfinder Dyneema bag, I've got my stove. This is just one of those uh, I think it's BPS titanium stoves. I got that off of Amazon. It's a nice little compact folding stove. Works every time. I've never had an issue with it. Very inexpensive. And it's so small and lightweight. Um, <clears throat> it's just a great item to have. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it inside my mug to protect it further. I don't want something happening to my stove I'm getting bent up. This pouch in here, this front pouch, it's pretty generous. So, more Garberg, Carbon, Baco Laplander, Saw. I've got, uh, this is kind of my, I don't know, Possibles pouch, first day, or survival pouch. Um, water treatment tablets. Grid readers, notepad, spare batteries for my headlamp or flashlight, whatever I'm carrying at the time, ferro rod, uh, <clears throat> matches, a pencil, mini compass, a Bic lighter, um, some Tinder cubes, and some of the, the Whirl Pack bags uh, for treating water, and then some fat wood, and uh, these are wax impregnated. Um, uh, makeup pads, um, really great for starting a fire. You can pull those apart, fluff them up, and get a fire going really quick. Um, so this has just all the little necessities, um, and I like to keep these in these aloe sacks. <clears throat> They're a waterproof bag, uh, much more heavy duty than a um, uh, a Ziploc. So uh, if you can find these, these are awesome. They're great for this kind of stuff, and I love it because I can see everything that's in here. Um, takes up very little room or weight, uh, the bag itself. And I've got all the necessities uh, to help me out in getting a fire going, treating water, doing land navigation, things like that. So these are necessity items. Really important stuff goes in that bag. <clears throat> now, the pouch itself um, is pretty deep. I mean, it's, it's probably a good... Uh, 10 to 12 inches uh, long 
and you know maybe uh, six to eight inches wide right there I would say there is some organization built into it as you can see here there is sewn in slots so you can put pens I've got a write and rain pen in one of them uh, big enough to fit a flashlight or maybe a uh, solar charger or something like that you can just put some of your gear in here there's also a mesh pouch uh, or sleeve right here to help organize or divide your gear up and I've got this pouch kind of behind there that kind of keeps everything separate and that pouch goes in there and I've got room for my knife my saw, coffee, fuel canister, spoon, and my cup. So, pretty generous pouch on the front. Um, but, oh, it's got a key keeper too. If that's important to you, or maybe, you know, um, demi cording like a, a compass or something like that into it, or a light. It's always a good idea. Uh, it does come with a Velcro panel, and it comes with two patches. Um, I don't know if you knew that or not. It comes with an American flag patch, which is uh, a rubberized material, and it comes with a 3V logo. Both are subdued to match the pack. They both fit on there pretty nicely. Um, I got those off, and I just got my prepared water patch on there, so I thought it looked pretty cool. Got dual zippers. Of course, there is... Um, Overhanging material that protects the zipper from moisture, from rain, um, that's important. That's a good feature so the, the zippers are not exposed. Now this pack is still kind of new so this is, the zippers are a little stiff so I probably need to um, maybe wax them up a little bit. <clears throat> but they'll, they'll loosen up with use. That's, the more you use these bags the more the zippers get a little bit more flexible and not so stiff. Um, there is a hydration pouch in the back um, and it does have a strap to hold your hydration bladder and this is actually a source three liter um, hydration bladder and it fits their handle perfectly that strap so it's a velcro strap you guys can see that it slides right back here now this pouch is slightly padded very lightly it's not very much so if you really did want to carry um, a laptop or for whatever reason, you have that capability. Um, and of course it has an elastic stretchy strap that Velcro's down. So as that pocket expands, it holds everything in, keeps it all nice and neat. Now, I've taken out um, my poncho and I've taken out my ground sheet, which is the U.S. military casualty blanket. Those both fit in here perfectly. And then what I've got down here at the bottom is uh, the Gila Kentuck Bushcraft Line Swagman Roll. Um, this one is with the Climate Shield Apex um, filling. So I've got one of those, uh, you know, for um, a cold weather bag pack like this it's good to have some kind of insulation layer of course this this backpack is not big enough to carry a big full-size sleeping bag um, but with a reflective blanket a poncho um, proper clothing something like an insulation la layer like this is a big help and it fits in here in the bottom of this backpack perfectly as you can t see tons of room <clears throat> to fill up and that's where, where all that extra gear that I was talking about went so it all fit in here perfectly not an issue at all all right a couple few other little things that I've noticed on this bag of course there are loops here on the bottom these nylon loops these are traditionally a loop like this on a backpack it would be considered or used for an ice axe now you know I'm in the Midwest don't really have a need for an ice axe, but you could run um, a hatchet, tomahawk, something like that, of that nature. Run that through, run it back, and then run a strap or a carabiner of some sort of some elastic to hold the handle. And now you got a means of carrying it that way. Of course, um, the bottom of the pack is slick. There are no straps or attachment points for a blanket or a sleeping bag. 
Um, I know for some people that's going to be a problem. They're not going to like that. And it's definitely something that probably should have been added to this bag. That would be my suggestion is like, let's get some strapping under here. Just a few, even if it was just four points <clears throat> so I could run strapping through it. Now with the bag of this size, um, and since it has no internal frame, uh, I would not be strapping a lot of gear to this thing. I would not be putting a bed roll underneath it. It would probably be way too much weight for it and it would not be comfortable. I would want to move up to a backpacking style backpack. And 3V gear carries um, a bag like that. So they have that option and of course other companies do as well. So that would be something I'd want to change. Um, also, the pouches in the main pack do not have drain holes. Uh, for some folks, uh, that's probably cool because um, they don't want sand and, and stuff getting inside. But I like drain holes in my packs in case this thing does get moisture in it or it gets submerged. At least it has a means of draining out. And particularly since I'm carrying canteens on either side, um, if they leak, I want to be able to have that water come out the bottom. So that'd be another thing that I would change about this backpack. Um, Quality-wise, uh, it seems to be uh, pretty good. Um, it's definitely going to be uh, warrant some more testing. Um, it's definitely in line with a lot of other packs that are out there. Now these are, uh, I believe, made overseas, um, but 3V Gear is a U.S. company, and um, so they have their their staff here in the United States. Um, they pack and ship all their stuff from the U.S. Um, and their customer service is pretty good. They have a pretty good no-nonsense warranty. So if something goes wrong, you email them or call them. They will arrange for the bag either to be sent back or they'll send you a replacement. Um, they're pretty good about that <clears throat> as far as I know and what I've read and what I've, I've seen with their reviews. So that is something you don't get with um, all of the other... Uh, overseas you know Chinese backpacks that are all over the all over eBay and all over the internet and all the different survival websites and stuff that they're trying to sell you a lot of those um, you know once they sell it to you you're stuck with it and if it craps out on you, you you're not gonna get your money back so at least 3v is a company that is US based and has customer service in the US and they will help you get a your uh, a new pack to replace the one if something goes wrong hey guys um, all right so that's it for today's review wanted to show you the pack see what you think as always please like subscribe comment share hit that bell icon so you get notifications um, for new videos um, check out the instagram page check out my facebook page there's a facebook group that you can join that's really pretty big it's growing all the time a lot of good content on there extra content and uh, check out the affiliate links below and help support the channel and help support those companies that support us so as always thanks for watching the prepared wanderer and we will see you next time <laughs>